Good morning, everyone. Today is Monday, October the 10th, and it's that time again. It's 10 a.m., and it's time for Get in the Know, your very own TV show, Highland Park. It's the information that everyone needs to know. We're giving you the information. We are having guests on board. We are feeding you all of the things that you are desperately wanting to have. So just getting a little housekeeping out of the way, if you want to call in and speak to any of our guests, you can always call us at 313-868-0342. Again, that's 313-868-0342. I am your host, Marley Blackman. Marley B, that's me. I am the press secretary for the city of Highland Park. And again, if you want to have a, if you have a call and you want to call in and talk to me, it's 313-868-0342. We are providing the city with, and the community with so much information. We all know that the city of Highland Park is full of history. And there's so many things that to know about the city of Highland Park. When most people think about the city of Highland Park, they think about the Model T plant and so many other things. Today, we're going to have Art Blackwell to talk and share about his history. That's what it is. It's history is his story. So we're going to listen to his story so he can tell us about just some of the things that he did and know knew about when he was growing up, the different city that it was and the city that it is today. And we want to know how can we get back to that. So we're going to take a short break and we're going to come back. Joining us at that time will be Mr. Art Blackwell. Thank you. Stay tuned in. Stay locked in to Get in the Know, your very own Highland Park TV show. And every Monday morning at 10 for Get in the Know with host Marley B. Providing the city of Highland Park news, information, and entertainment. Find out what's happening in Highland Park from the city's movers and shakers. Get in the know with Marley B. Monday mornings at 10, right here on WHPR. Welcome back to your very own Highland Park TV show, Get In The Know. I am your host, Marley Blackman. Marley B, that's me. And here joining me today is Mr. Art Blackwell, Mr. History himself for Highland Park. You know, I'm not a Highland Parker, and um, I, I, know, I know about Highland Park, but not as much as I should. And I'm hoping that today you can talk to us about Highland Park, the history, and hoping that I can learn a great deal about Highland Park. Um, just because you can't really understand where you're going if you don't know where you've been. And so I think that um, just the young people and the community just really need to know that. And a lot of people that you know, are senior citizens, they're like, oh, I already know all of that stuff. But there's a lot of young people that don't know the history. Um, not only Highland Park, but their history. So they can understand why they shouldn't be in the, they shouldn't do the things that they do, take the actions that they take if they really understood the struggles and how we even got here today. So I'm hoping that you can bring that out. I can bring that out of you and we can have a little fun. Um, we took the liberty of pulling some clips so we can kind of talk about those and, and just understand what your thoughts are when you see certain pictures and photos that we have. So Mr. Blackwell, tell me just a little bit about yourself. Uh, as you mentioned, Art Black was my name. I was uh, born in the city of Detroit, moved to Holland Park when I was one week old. Okay. So uh, this is my city. Uh, Highland Park is an suburb, which means it's on the inside of Detroit. Okay. And uh, it's very unique in that even though we had a different city, a different school system, a different governance, we still grew up as part of the Detroit uh, experience as well. Yes. Uh, my father was the first African American elected in the state of Michigan, uh, in the city of Highland Park, almost 50 years ago. Wow. And um, uh, my sister, I still have an older sister who was a principal of one of the schools. Now she's an educational consultant at George Washington Carver, uh, and two other sisters. And I have four children. And uh, you know, I love this city. I was uh, served as the emergency financial manager for four years, and um, you know, the Highland Park has changed, but a lot about it remains the same. A lot of the children 
of our, uh, my, my colleagues, uh, people my age, you know, we didn't leave. We still are committed to the city. That so, is wonderful. Uh, do, you, do you think that that's what it takes for a community to, to keep its foundation and continue to grow? It's not, you know, it's not go and get an education, go off to college and stay gone. It's go off, get an education, and come back and rebuild your community. Do you, do you I've believe seen, in I've that? Seen, I, I, I've seen both. Okay. Uh, I've seen people go away and not come back but still have an interest in the city. Okay. See, it's it's amazing about our people, uh, African Americans, you know, they feel if you don't come back you can't make a contribution. But if you took it look at the American Jewry that's in this country more than six million, they haven't abandoned Israel because they live in America. That's right. They, they still send support, money back. But they don't just send money back. They lobby Congress for laws that are are, are supportive of their country that's their their dual citizens so to speak. So no matter where I was or where I would be, Holland Park is still the focal point of who I am because the lessons learned and the people that I interact with that are still here. My mother, you know, she's still, uh, I can't tell your age, but she's past 95. And, okay, and, wow. Uh, fully lucid and uh, could have moved out of Holland Park any number of times, refused, decided not to, and okay. uh, still lives in the home that I grew up in. Wow, that's, so that's amazing. We, we, we're Holland Park is for real. Okay. I think I, you know, we want to show a couple of clips. You guys, ha are you ready for a clip to show? Because we want to talk about some of the clips that we have. Do you guys ready to post one of the clips that we have? All right. So what, know that building, what well, building is this? That's Howard Place. Okay. Uh, on Glendale. But it's the old Holland Park General Hospital. Okay. Well, I spent many nights as a kid because I had asthma. Okay. So Holland Park General is one of the first um, uh, hospitals uh, in, the, in, in really in Southeast Michigan that started accepting black physicians. Uh, it was an extraordinary hospital. People that worked there. I mean, it was a it was a, a place of excellence because at one time Holland Park almost had forty five thousand people that lived in the city, and so it had the it had the tax base. It had the revenue to be able to support a community hospital. Absolutely, absolutely. What did you think, Mr. Blackwell, when you saw the city changing from as you've known it? You know, that, 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 that's kind of an a, a interesting question. That's like asking me what did I think when I look in the mirror and I see white hair and a gray beard. I'm still Art Blackwell. Right. Uh, I'm just older. Okay. Uh, and it's the same with the city. Okay. Uh, you know, it's, it's amazing to me that we see this city as a daunting challenge to redevelop. When we bombed uh, Japan back into the Stone Age, that was rebuilt. Yes. Vietnam was rebuilt. Yes. Uh, Korea was rebuilt. And Germany was rebuilt, all with U.S. support. So for me, Holland Park is the perfect place to rebuild because it really the core principles and people of this hasn't really changed. That is amazing. And, and when people say, because I've heard this, when people say it's the last black city, they've said that to me. What does that mean to you? I mean, I mean, obviously, it's a city. It's a city that has a governance. It has a legal structure. So it's a, it's a functioning city yes. that provides services. With, with, by saying, African American dominated city or a city that has a, a completely black, you know, elected official core yes. in terms of mayor, city clerk, treasurer, council people, and judge. Uh, to me, that's something not to be ashamed of or run away from, but to be proud of. Absolutely. You know, I've never uh, ever. Seen a predominantly white community apologize for its its makeup. No, I wouldn't say that we need to apologize. I think we need to embrace it and well, hang on to it. I think I, that's I, what people mean. I think some people think that in order to be successful, you have to have more of another ethnic group. Mm -hmm. And my position is if people move in this community of their free will, and I don't care who they are. See, the thing that I love about my people, African Americans, I've never seen an African-American ever complain about a white or Latina moving in their neighborhood. But I've seen the reverse of that, where mm -hmm. blacks have tried to move into white neighborhoods and either been racial epitaphs been written on their house or crosses burned mm -hmm. on their line. Yeah. African-Americans are, are unique people based on our history, and so Holland Park for me is a place that really anchored the professional class of blacks. Because if you look at uh, when we came up, my mother, who finished law school 77 years ago, mm -hmm. and my dad, who, you know... We have a picture of your mom and finished, dad. Could you guys play that clip? Howard. 
uh, across the street, there's a lady that's visiting now, Dr. Edith Lee. Uh -huh. was one of the first black uh, women to finish uh, Michigan Medical School. So yes. you have. Is that your mom and dad? That's them. Awesome. Yeah, that's my mom and dad. Okay. And, uh, uh, before my, they were married 63 years before my father passed. Okay. And, uh, you know, they kind of gave the virtue of what it meant to be, uh, you know, parents. Yes. Not biological mamas and daddies. You know, anybody can produce an offspring, but can you raise them and nurture them and make them be productive members of society? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. All right. So we're going to take a short break and we're um, going to come back and have more questions for Mr. Art Blackwell. And again, if you have any questions that you like to pose, please don't hesitate to give us a call at 313-868-0342. Again, that's 313-868-0342. We'll be back. Stay locked in. And we're back with Get in the Know, your very own TV show, Highland Park. I am Marley Blackman. Marley B, that's me. And again, if you'd like to call in, please call us at 313-868-4336. Again, 313-868-4336. We are here with Mr. Art Blackwell and just having a really good conversation about the history of Highland Park. And you're telling it his story. He's telling his story of Highland Park. And we just want to kind of get more in tune of what's going on and, um, so when you were growing up here in the city, um, was it was Highland Park the place to live? Was it the place to be? Yes, it was. And uh, it was one of the top five public school systems in the state. Wow. A lot of people don't know that. My, gradu my, my sister that graduated before and after me one year, Yeah. Um, we, we sent more kids to college. And then of the kids that went to college, more finished than a noble urban setting. I mean, I, you know, I have a t college degree. My sister's an attorney, two sisters an attorney, one's an educator. Okay. And that wasn't unique. Yes. Uh, two of my best friends that lived on uh, Tennyson, Elaine Ferguson, and uh, Denise Ferguson finished uh, Duke Medical School and Harvard Law School. Yes. And then you have uh, a guy named Herman Pettiford. He used to be younger than us, used to run with our little group. Mm -hmm. We called him Gumpy because he was so Gumpy. Uh-huh. <laughs> He finished Warden School of Business, Harvard Medical School, and wow. went on to run George Washington's medical facility. That's amazing. And that's not unique. I mean, everybody, even guys who were, you would consider troublemakers, went to college and finished. Uh huh. Because that was just talking and being educated was part of who we well, were. That was the thing you did, right? Yeah, but it, but it's, it, 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 it took an investment of a community and of teachers. And I remember when the teachers that taught me lived in Highland Park, black and white. Uh huh. So if you needed to, if they needed to stay over a little later to help you with something after school, it wasn't an issue because they only lived four blocks from where they taught. Yes. Now they hurry up and run out before you get out because they got to go pick their kids up 25 miles away where they live. Yes. The whole community education, community policing scenario has been destroyed by the lack of residency and the lack of investment in the community where you make your earnings. Okay. So, you know, I was driving, I think it was Friday in the, in the neighborhoods and we were just looking at some housing and things like that. And the homes, the structure of these homes, you, the foundation of them, you can't really find anywhere. What do you, if you were to remarket and rebrand the city, what would be one thing that you would tell people about Highland Park? 
I mean, number one, if anybody and anybody that's an expert in real estate says there's one key to real estate, yes. location, 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 period. Yes. There's nothing else to say. Holland Park is the middle of everything. Yes. We're bisected by Wood Avenue, uh, uh, perpendicular to Davidson Freeway, bounded by the lodge and, the, and 75. You can't get a better location. That's why Henry Ford put the plant here. That's why Chrysler bid their world headquarters here. That's why Excello and Helm and Saunders Candy Company all came here because it was in the middle of everything. And not only that, it had, it own, had its own school system and it's had its own water system. Yes. And it had things that made it unique to be able to operate and do business. Wonderful. Yeah. So um, wanting to get people back to Highland Park because we want to we want to make sure that we're shedding the right light on Highland Park. We want to make sure that we're keeping our community, but also expounding as well. Would you would you say so? Yeah, or? I think there are people moving back to Highland Park already. Okay. I think they're moving in those very neighborhoods you're talking about right. where there, there are nice homes uh in the northwest part of Detroit or the southeast part where my parents live. Yes. My mother still lives and sister lives. Uh, see, Holland Park is small enough to fix. It's bounded by 2.2 square miles, but it, I mean, you could knock down all the abandoned homes and structures in Holland Park for about seven million. You need a billion dollars in Detroit to do that. Mm -hmm. Really pretty much unattainable just tearing down houses because the problem is I tear down 10,000 houses this year. Yes. Another 7,000 come online because they're old and they need, they're in need of repair. So Holland Park is small enough to fix. The issue is, is that, and it's not against opening your doors. I think when you're on a plane and they say in the case of loss of cabin pressure, before you help your kid, put your mask on. That's right. And I think before we start just saying, come on, and everybody takes everything like they are in Detroit. I mean, Detroit, they're actually systematically moving the indigenous dwellers of Detroit, downtown Detroit out. Yes. I don't want that to happen here. So my position is to encourage people in Holland Park to develop and then take your, if you're here, encourage your niece or nephew or cousin to move in. Yes. And I think build a community first. And then, you know, market forces take over after that. That's right. So we have some, it's always like this. I always have this show and... I get. I want to make sure that we're giving enough information out, but then the hour go by so quickly, and I we have to get in the call. So somebody's trying to call and get through to talk to you. Well, you ain't giving me an hour, but that's okay. I, you know what? I'm going to give you as long as we need no, to because no, I'm I having got, a I'm good waiting, time. I want to hear what the senator has uh, to see, say. See, you know, you know, you're giving out the secrets. I didn't, I didn't even. Say, I didn't say which senator. <laughs> now you giving away the secret. <laughs> I just said, so it could be we have a, we have a great be... show today. So we're going to take a call, Mr. Blackwell. Are you ready? Yes. All right. Wonderful. Good morning, caller. You're live on the air with Get in the Know, your very own Highland Park TV show with Marley B., your host, and Mr. Art Blackwell. What can we do for you? Hi, Marley B. and Mr. Blackwell. I have a question for Mr. Blackwell. Absolutely. Uh, Mr. Blackwell, you were an emergency manager for Highland Park and uh, always hear you on the news that you were for the people and for the city of Highland Park, and you did great things. What's your opinion of the emergency manager system that we have now under Governor Snyder? Uh, first of all, I, excellent question, and thank you so much for the comment. I was actually an emergency financial manager under Public Act 72. As you remember, Public Act 72 was repealed because people, uh, uh, the governor and others, thought that they needed a more draconian, more dictatorial system, so they put in Public Act 4, which was so bad that the, uh, uh, there was a referendum uh, put forward to the people, and they actually repealed PA4, and as, as, as you will find out later, was replaced by Public Act 436, which was really another example of PA4 with a few caveats, a few differences. The point is, whenever you're in a democratic system and you disenfranchise the people that actually pay the taxes, do the commerce, and you rule from afar, you have the most dangerous form of government. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's autocratic, it's dictatorial, and the local people feel totally disenfranchised in terms of the fate of their city. So the new system that was put to replace four was, a, was really more of the same and really was a slap in the face of the voters of the state, not just Detroit, but, but PA4 was rejected statewide. So I think it was a mistake and I think that a, a good example of that mistake 
was looking at what happened in Flint with the water crisis, where you had some technocrats making decisions about the lives of people. Mm -hmm. And I know they're blaming all the people at the mid-level, but at the highest level, ultimately the governor is responsible for the decisions that are made by his staff. Mm -hmm. And I think that system was designed to save a few pennies and ended up costing hundreds of millions because of, of narrow vision. And let me say this about Hurricane Katrina. If they had invested the one and a half to two billion dollars that was requested by the Army Corps of Engineers mm -hmm. to fix the levee, that that Ward Nine would have never been overrun and the city devastated like that. So they 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 were short sighted on two billion. They ended up spending two hundred billion. Same thing with Flint. Same thing with this law. So this law is short sighted and it's not really designed to fix a city permanently. It's designed to create this image of being fixed and make a lot of consultants who are related to the state yes. apparatus rich. Absolutely. All right, we have another caller. Caller, good morning. You're live in the air with Get in the Know, Marley B. and Mr. Art Blackwell. Do you have a question? Uh, good morning, Mr. Blackwell and uh, Marley B. Good morning. Good morning. I, um, I wanted uh, Mr. Blackwell to talk, uh, uh, say something about the uh, relationship of Highland Park and World War II and Henry Ford. <laughs> well, as you know, um, you know, during World War II, when um, uh, Japan was bombed and uh, President Roosevelt declared war, uh, Detroit became known as the arsenal of democracy. Where they, what they did, they retrofitted the manufacturing capacity of, of, of cities. Uh, to make armaments, uh, planes, tanks, and, and actually stop producing cars. And uh, without the effort by Detroit, uh, many say the war might have not gone as well as it did. So Detroit stepped up and provided a critical role mm -hmm. for the country. And Highland Park, having this fantastic uh, facility, didn't produce as much, didn't retrofit as much. There were other plants that did that as well. But it did play a role in the in that effort. Henry Ford, being an industrialist, played a role in that effort. There's some mixed hin there's some mixed history about Henry Ford, though. Yes. And his particular sympathizing sometimes, mm -hmm. they, you know, some accuse him of being a not Nazi sympathizer. Mm -hmm. People need to know that a lot of Jews would not buy Ford products for many years because they felt Henry Ford's role. Uh, in the German effort was not as clear as it should have been, or World War II effort yes. against Nazi Germany. So, uh, but that plant, who was designed by Albert Kahn, is one of the most uh, is an architectural uh, 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 is architecturally genius because it's the way it's built. You can't tear it down. Mm -hmm. The density of the concrete. Wow. It was made to last, mm -hmm. and a lot of people don't realize there's a hundred acres over there, and there's almost three million square feet of building. Wow. I mean, so you're talking about something that, uh, you know, really could be a linchpin for some future development, but it would take an extraordinary amount of money. Obviously, I know the owners very well. I work with them on a regular basis, and they're good corporate citizens, and they want to do some things to be involved yes. in the city. And they actually sold the front of that so that there could be a shopping center development. So there's there's so many people that do good things in Highland Park, but there's a lot of history about Henry Ford, his war effort, Detroit being the arsenal of democracy, but also Henry Ford's kind of cloudiness as it related to Nazi Germany. Wow. See, that's why we're here. We're getting people in the know. And again, what better person could tell us about the history of this city than Mr. Art Blackwell himself? We're going to take another caller. Good morning, caller. You're live on the air with Get in the Know. How can we help you? Good morning to you. Good morning. Morning. Are you there? Hello? Yes. Can you hear us? Okay. Good morning to you. Good morning. Ma'am and Mr. Blackwell. Morning. I'm a citizen of Highland Park, and I know seven miles going south is international water. Two miles going left is the third richest county in America, Oakland County. Yes. And it's on Woodward. That's yes. where Highland Park runs through. But, Mr. Blackwell, keep doing what you do. You kept us out of receivership, and I remember that. And Sometimes I know about Highland Park because I'm a citizen of Highland Park. Mm -hmm. Made a movie in Highland Park, an international movie database. So uh, when I look at you, Mr. Blackwell, I even was a part of your father's crew, Mayor Bob's cleanup crew, when I was a young man. Okay. But keep doing what you do and letting the people know what it is. God bless you. 
Thank you, sir. Thank Appreciate you so much, that. caller. We're going to take one more call, and then we're going to take a short break. Caller, you're live on the air with Get In To Know, your very own TV show with Marley Blackman and Mr. Art Blackwell. What is your question? Yeah, my question is to uh, Art Blackwell. That's my man there. He know me when he see me. Art, I wanted to ask you two questions. What year did they uh, stop making tractors and, and that forward plant? And also, on the other side of John R., like you go with Seven Mile and John R., yes. going towards the freeway, was that ever part of Harlem Park? Because I know some people stood on Eaton and Keaton in the Coventry, and they 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 may have used to say Harlem Park, but when they was living in Harlem Park in the 80s, that was no longer part of Harlem Park. Was that ever rezoned back in the days? Well, remember that Harlem Park started out unincorporated, which means that there was probably designated services provided by the government of Highland Park that wasn't actually a part of the incorporation of Highland Park. And as that got codified in 1915, mm -hmm. I believe, uh, then the, the lines were very clear where Highland, the boundaries of Highland Park. In terms of the Ford plant, the tractors, they only made those tractors for about a year and a half to two years. And uh, then that, 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 that shut down. One of the problems Henry Ford didn't anticipate and this is, you know, when you talk about the, the model of Henry Ford, what Henry Ford did changed the world because he made cars that people who made the car could afford to buy mm -hmm. because he paid $5 a day as a wage. Now, I talked to some of the historians who told me he actually didn't always pay $5 a day. No, he didn't. But when you think about what sharecroppers and others who went came north from the south made, yes. it was like a bonanza. Mm -hmm. So people were able to, to, for the first time, move into housing. You have Black Bottom and you have uh, Conant Gardens, some of the first yes. black homeowners. Yes. And then, you know, uh, many African-American parents, my parents came to Holland Park in the late 40s and early 50s and bought homes. And... Really, when you talk about it, they were the pioneering uh, Americans that really uh, came and developed. And one of the things, and I'll say this, uh, you know, before your next guest comes, because a lot of people miss this. You know, disinformation and misinformation, a lot of times, people don't really understand. I mean, they talk about the 40 years of black mayors in Detroit as if it was a bad thing. Yeah. There was so much white flight and disinvestment in Detroit. Those 40 years, black people held Detroit together. Yes. They paid the taxes. They yes. paid the fees. They cut the grass. They did everything they, they did. needed to do to maintain the city. So when you talk about now all of a sudden somebody's been here two years and Detroit's a comeback city, that's nonsense. Yes. It was coming back all along. And Holland Park is coming back. People don't know this, but it was on the, it was on the border of some – disastrously stuff over the last year or so but now this new administration with the people that represent us in Lansing Senator Johnson uh, 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 representative Garrett there are some Holland Park is really ready for a breakthrough and uh, I you know I've been working as an unofficial advisor so I know that things that appeared impossible a year ago yes. now look very possible. Very possible. All right. Well, thank you so much for callers for calling in. Again, if you'd like to call in and talk to us, you can reach us at 313-868-4336. We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back with Get in the Know. Every Monday morning at 10 for Get in the Know with host Marley B. Providing the city of Highland Park news, information, and entertainment. Find out what's happening in Highland Park from the city's movers and shakers. Get in the know with Marley B. Monday mornings at 10, right here on WHPR. Get in and know your very own TV show, Highland Park. I am your host, Marley Blackman. Marley B, that's me. And again, I am here with Mr. Art Blackwell, and we were going down memory lane a little bit. I want to show one last photo, and then we're just going to take another break and bring up on our, our next guest. But we have a photo with your dad just in a conference room. I, who is he talking? What is he doing? Is, was he mayor at this time? Do you know? Uh, I'm pretty sure he was. Okay. Uh, I don't know the age Let's of the photo. 
My father was elected to the city council in 1965. Okay. Uh, but but it looks like there look, look like there it's a voting. Like I see voting booths in the back. Yeah. And they look like they're at a polling place. All right. And I'm sure if I got had my glasses, I could probably make out who those people are. Uh huh. But uh, right now, I can't. Well, that leads us right into our next guest with you know with this election that's going on and how important it is to get out there and vote and register to vote and all that. And your dad was just trying to back then. It seems like he was just trying to make it happen at that point. Well, all of us uh, need to know voting is very important in terms of empowering our community. Yes. And a lot of people say that what difference does it make? Yes. But it can make the, it's the difference between succeeding and not succeeding by having the right people in office. And I know your next next guest will be able to explain it. I, I watched the debate last night. So did I. And what a I, debacle. Well, yes and no. I think people saw what they saw. But at the end of the day, even if you don't have a high opinion of either candidate, because I have children and grandchildren, I know that Donald Trump is an existential threat to the safety and security of this country. Forget the policies. I'm talking about you can't say something stupid when other people are nuclear armed yes. and then want to take it back. Once the missiles launch, it's over. That's right. So I'd like to have somebody at least have some sanctity, some sanity, and you know know how to execute foreign some affairs rationale. in a very yeah. diplomatic way. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for thank your time you for this me. morning. Okay. And, um, I know that we didn't have a long enough time to it get was, through it, it all, but hopefully, enough. hopefully you'll come back on one day won't later. Be, it won't be soon. No, it won't no, be. No, I, about <laughs> once a year I'll come on. <laughs> once a year. Yeah. All, right. all right. Perfect. So thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. All right. So we're going to take a short break, and we'll be back with Senator Johnson. He's just going to talk to us about the importance of voting and what it means to not only your family, um, but to your community. We'll be right back. And every Monday morning at ten, for Get in the Know, with host Marley B. Providing the city of Highland Park news, information, and entertainment. Find out what's happening in Highland Park from the city's movers and shakers. Get in the know with Marley B. Monday mornings at 10, right here on WHPR. And welcome back, and thanks for being locked in. I'm your host, Marley Blackman, Marley B, that's me. And today we're going to talk about elections and how so, how so very important it is um, voting and being registered to vote and how important this election is. I know that the world seems to think that um, it's just crazy and um, we don't really probably like either of the candidates, but we have to vote for someone and something, and we have to stand up for someone and something because it is detrimental to our our families to our community and today is really the last day if you're not registered to vote that you can register to vote and how important it is to do so and today we have Senator Burt Johnson here Good joining morning. us and I'm so thankful that you're here good morning to oh, you no, it's my pleasure wonderful you. wonderful so it's just a wealth of information all these powerful powerful black people in the city of Highland Park and working for the betterment of our city and Bless you and, and Lansing just making sure that we get our fair share our just yep. do yeah. tell me what what is what does this election mean to you what what is it like being a part of it all you know uh and you're having a great show number one thank uh, you. you started out with all that history and you know, nobody better than art to to sort of underscore that this election is important people always like to say that this is the most important election of our life yes uh, well this is kind of right up there right uh you've got a couple different ideologies philosophies approaches on uh display here and people need to choose the one that they understand can really sort of hold the line yes. with respect to what President Obama has been able to produce uh, beyond his first seven and a half years in office, but then also someone who can carry us into the future. Um, and people shouldn't be looking for a savior. They should yes. not be looking for somebody who can dress it all up and put a pretty bow on it and make it all go away, the problems that is. But they should be looking for someone who is more closely aligned with the vision that they have for their own family, yes. their small business, their community, and in the country at large. Oh, absolutely. Um, so it's a pretty important discussion that we're having right mm -hmm. now. And there are a couple of different ideologies on display that I think people should be very easily, in my estimation, to choose between. Yes. All right. So why do you think that 
there are so many people still today that's not registered to vote. Why do you think that that is? I think there are a lot of folks who uh, will tell you very plainly that politics hasn't worked for them in a very long time. Uh, look at the city of Highland Park. We've had great mayors. Yes. Uh, Bob Blackwell was one of them. He was a guy who was able to stretch his hand out and touch the Oval Office during his time as mayor. He got things for our community because he had that reach, yes. that conversation, that relationship. Uh, but there are a lot of people who have forgotten along the way that that is a very necessary component of how you lead as mayor, mm -hmm. how you lead as governor, mm -hmm. how you lead as state senator, mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. We're not supposed to be, we're supposed to be locally driven, but not locally stayed. We're supposed to get out, yes. get up, and go get some. Yes, that's so right. the, the, the bigger point here becomes that people feel disenfranchised, mm -hmm. particularly in our region when so much has happened to them by way of bad policy, yeah. folks are saying, man, it doesn't matter what happens. But we know that that is not the case. Right. That's not the truth. Right. Uh, prior to President Obama, I think people thought the world was coming to an end. Yes. Right? With yep. President Bush I and agree. his minions and the people I agree. who are running the country. And so we have seen what can happen when we put good people in these positions. Now we need to be really about the business of raising that next group of leaders that will take over in your city council, your state assemblies, uh, and, and then ascend to the federal level as well. Wonderful. So what does the world look like if we were not able to vote? Can you talk to <laughs> me about that? Like if, if we woke up. It looks like Rick Snyder's Michigan in very many just ways. Just like that. You know, from Benton Harbor to Pontiac, Highland Park to Flint to Saginaw to all these black enclaves yes. where we had seats of black power, where we had uh, very strong manufacturing and industrial bases, to where we had high pockets of concentrated educational uh, opportunity where people took advantage of it. Yeah. Now looking at what has been produced under a guy like Rick Snyder while simultaneously serving with a guy like President Obama uh, has been a very ironic look at where we are and where we're supposedly headed. We had a chance to get rid of Rick Snyder yes. in 14, and we didn't. And Michigan has more Democrats than Republicans. Um, my vision going forward for where we should be as, a, let's just say, Highland Park, is that we needed to get sound leadership elected. We did that in Mayor Hubert job. We did that in Rodney Patrick becoming the yes. president of our city council. Yes. Now we're in a position to work together because there's a lot of love between these black men and the women that are elected and that are supportive and that are uh, in the administration. We got some strong synergy going. Yes, we now do. Now we're turning, we're turning that corner. Absolutely. You know, guys like Art Black will have never stopped working for the city of Highland Park, even though he's not an employee. Uh, and there are a lot of good people who said, hell no, we're not going away. You mm -hmm. know, one of your next guests is what I think is the, pre the preeminent type of Highland Parker we want people to find within themselves. Yes. She's somebody who says, listen, my block doesn't look the way I want it to look, so guess what? I'm going to change it. That's right, and, and that's what you it. need. And I'm going to do it, and you need that. Yeah. And if you don't have that, you're missing out on the creative side of what we are as a community. That's the beauty of being black, bold, and in charge. So, you know, that's I'm a right. huge I fan of her. It. She knows that. Um, but we're going to be okay mm -hmm. because we got a few good men and women in place now who see this for what it really is. As it relates to this election, which, like you said earlier, many people need to get registered to vote no later than tomorrow. That's D-Day. Okay. You want to participate in this election, you don't like what you saw last night, you want to do something about it, you need to be registered no later than 4.30 p.m. tomorrow, October 11. Where would they go? Tell, they're tell. going to go. They're going to go to their city clerk. Okay. And they're going to go to the county clerk. Okay. And they're going to put their name down on a voter registration card. They're going to turn it in with their uh, license to back them up as to where they live. And they're going to be in the mix and can then exercise a vote on November 8th to say, this is what I want for me and my family and my small business and my community going forward. Okay. Folks got to do that. They do. It's important. It's, it's, you don't have a right to not do it. That's I mean, right. legally you do, but figuratively, let's just be real. Has it worked if you haven't participated? No. Right. So now it's time for people to fully participate and do what they know how to do. That's right. So you said black, bold. And in charge. And in charge. Yeah. Yeah. That's 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 great. That's and a that's, great and statement. That's, and that's not a mistake. You know, we have been duped into thinking that we have not been leaders yeah. for generations, for thousands of years, for millions mm -hmm. of years. I mean, Christopher Columbus, today is Columbus Day. That dude didn't find this place. Blacks found it first. Right. And blacks inhabited it first. So are you saying today should be first. Blacks Day? Without question. Every day should be <laughs> Blacks Day. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, you look at what the Moors did. Yes. The ruling for 800 years. There are seven liberal arts, not the three that they want us to learn in primary school. And if we knew all seven of our liberal arts, think about this as an example. You have children who are getting bullied, and we tell them, now if somebody bullies you, you go tell an adult. Don't bully anybody. That's not the right thing to do, Marley. But if you knew that martial arts was one of the seven liberal arts, how long would someone be able to bully you before you took your two or three fingers, put them on their shoulder, and twisted them up in a pretzel? Right. And had that kid say, you know what, I messed with the wrong one. I won't do it again. Right. It is foundational who we are 
everything that this world has become is because of us. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Plato, Socrates, Aristotle, those dudes don't exist unless they go get taught by those in ancient Kemet. The difference is, is that we're not celebrating it as though it's ours. And perhaps it's because we don't know enough. That means we got to read books. We got to reopen the Highland Park we Library. We have to educate ourselves. I'm going to get off my soapbox, but my point no, is No, I to love be it. Black is to be not just beautiful, but it's to be gorgeous and much sought yes, after. Absolutely. People are sticking stuff in their lips, their hips, and you name it to look like us. That's for a reason. Yes. That's for a reason. Absolutely. We have a, call, a caller trying to get through. We're going to take one call and then we'll come back and talk about how important it is to make sure that you're registered to vote. We're going to take our next caller. Good morning, caller. You're live on the air with Getting to Know, your very own Highland Park TV show. How can we help you? Hello. Are you talking to me? Yes. Good morning. Okay. okay. I'm a seven and six year old female. I moved here in Highland Park in 1968. And recently, I got a letter from the water department. They've done a job on the water department. I would like for somebody to talk to what's going on with this water department. 76 years of age, I don't need all of these changes at this time. Before that, I was getting my water bill every, every, it every three months. Now I get it every month. And the most ridiculous thing is, about 20 years ago or uh, uh, earlier, I bought the empty lot next to me and I fished it in. And the, my, the water department, the water, my water was in my husband's name. Somebody did a research. They took it out of my husband's name because he's deceased. They put it in my name, and they sent me two bills, mm. one for the empty lot that's connected to my lot. Mm. Y if you didn't know there was an empty lot over there, you would never know it. And then they bill me for drainage or something, and then they bill me for mailing it out. I want to know what in the world is going on. Can you do I, me a favor? I want to do anybody know what's going on. Can you can you do me a favor? I'm going to see if I can dig and get some answers for you. Can you call the city? I'm going to give you the number. It is 313-252-0050 extension 258. That's my extension. Call me, leave me a voicemail and then I'm going to get some information you said and get back to you. What? Can you do you have a pen? I have it in my hand now. Okay. So it's 313-252-0050. Ex okay. ex that's the the city hall extension two five eight. Two five eight. Yep, that's my direct dial. Give leave me a voicemail and then I can try to find some information for you. Okay, because I appreciate it. I've, after being here all this time, you get a water bill every three months. Now all of a sudden, it's just changed drastically. Absolutely. I'm sorry that you're going through that, ma'am. Give me a call. You can call right now and leave the voicemail, and I'll I'll get some information for you. Okay. All right. All right. Have a great day. Okay. Thanks for calling. All right, we're back with Senator Bird Johnson. Is it, is there anything that you want to say to close out? It seems like I just needed a whole hour with you just to talk <laughs> about because some of the things that you were talking about are some of the things that I'm very passionate mm -hmm. with. I think, um, as I mentioned when with Mr. R. Blackwell was on, it's it's about knowing your history so you can oh, yeah. know where you're going. Absolutely. And while we're even in the position that we're in yeah. as a race, as a race of people, um, so that's a whole nother show. That's it a whole is, nother something else. But But really, it's a part of understanding why it's important to vote because a lot of people think that their vote does not matter does sure, not count sure. um and if one person doesn't do it if if one person doesn't do it it's it's not going to matter because they're not going to miss me i'm just yeah. one little old person but if everybody thought that way then we're taking away our rights your yeah. vote does count and um and you're right in lansing and you see yeah. so yeah. many things yeah. that we don't see yeah. And you're fighting for so many things that we can't fight for for ourselves. And right. we just, I just want to thank you. I want to thank you for, for giving us the passion, the love, the concern to not only um, put it into Highland Park, but just put it into the people. Yeah. And yeah. it takes a special kind of someone to even wake up every day, get sharp, put on a suit, <laughs> put on a smile, have a fresh cut and everything yeah. and say, all right, you know what? I'm going to take it today. And this is this is my task. Well, and you know, in our community, do. there's a there's an old uh, saying, we always got to have our fronts together. That's right? right. You know, you can't let folks see you sweat. Um, and so, you know, you go to Lansing to do the job because the job's got to get done. Yes. Um, even though we have small numbers, I'm very, very 
honored to have been selected to be the guy who represents this community and so many others. Uh, but this vote is very important. Okay. This election is very important. Getting your family involved. Do like I do. I have a potluck every year that there's an election. We get all the family over and we just talk about the issues so that people can understand who are the judges, what are the proposals about. Um, and I'll end like, like this. People have asked me before, what's the most important thing on the ballot? And it's not the president. It's not the senator. It's not your state rep. It's not your city councilman. It's not your mayor. It is the millage because that's where your tax dollars begin and end. People are going to decide how those dollars get spent. The second most important thing are judges because at some point you're going to see one, hopefully not for criminal, yeah. but maybe for civil, civil real estate, yes. maybe not divorce. Uh, but at some point you're going to see one. You might get a traffic ticket. Yes. You need people who can fairly execute the law as uh, a, ju a judicial member of, of the bench. Wow. Uh, and then the third most important people or the third thing to really be looking for are school board members mm -hmm. because these are folks who are going to frame the educational concept and conversation in the community and raise the next level of leaders. Without that, and Highland Park does not have a school system right now, right. the one that we are paying for right. still, uh, you're missing a major component of how you build a community. So notice I didn't say me. You know, I'm not that important. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, how you spend money, who's going to decide the fate of these laws made, and then the people who are raising your babies in school, those are the three most important things in absolutely, your community. Absolutely, absolutely. So it's a very important election. Get up, get out, get some, take your family with you, take your friends with you, shame people into voting, and make them know the issues. Donald Trump is a fool. He's got the little hat on, he's got the shoes on, and mm -hmm. he's a jester yes. in this very Kim Kardashian, TMZ world that we live in where we look for sensational things and no substance. Yes. While you may have some disagreements, some fundamentals, some philosophical disagreements with Hillary Clinton, she ain't Donald Trump. Right. So today I'm going to say I'm with, I'm with her. Okay. But at the end of the day, I'm going to teach my babies, as we should all be teaching our babies, build a small business that works for your household. It yes. is the number one way to build generational, intergenerational wealth. Amazing. We can't look past that. Amazing. And there it is right here on Getting the Know with Senator Burt Johnson. And I hope that you got the information that you needed to know. Again, if you have any more information with regards to where to vote, how to vote, please give us a call at 313-868-0342. And again, I'm glad you brought that up because there are so many th different things on the ballot. Oh, and yeah. it's not just presidential. And you have to know that you have to vote on those things right. to make in order to make change and see change happen. Right. All right, we're going to take a short break. And then when we come back, we're going to be joined by Miss Mama Shu, Avalon Village. She's going to talk to us about some wonderful things that's happening right here in Highland Park. Stay tuned in, stay locked in, and we'll be right back. Welcome back to your very own TV show, Get in the Know. I am your host, Marley Blackman. Marley B, that's me. And today uh, we are using this platform to get you, the people, the community, the world, the information that you need, you deserve, um, right here in Highland Park. We have wonderful guests coming on. I'm so thankful that people are wanting to be on the show to get the information out to you because it's so very important. Um, we are <laughs> getting ready to be joined by mama shoe she is so famous i'm so honored to be sitting right here next to her she is going to be coming on probably what twice a month yes, just to yes. kind of give us some information about mm -hmm. some things that's going on with the charter some yes. events some just just great stuff right yes, yes. well welcome mama shoe you have thank the floor you. thank you thank you thank you citizens it's good to be here good morning to you good morning marley b and thank you for having me on the show absolutely um I am just very honored to be here in this space and basically to have an opportunity uh, to be able to share uh, different updates and things. So one of the uh, things that I really wanted to uh, encourage the citizens to come out to is our charter meetings. Um, I am the chair for the Highland Park Charter uh, Commission. Uh, we have a nine member board. Uh, this Commissioner Ramsey, who is vice chair. We have Kim Ball, who is secretary, Commissioner uh, uh, Jones Freeman, who is the treasurer. Then we have Commissioners Lewis Jackson, Linda Wheeler, uh, Lucy Fry, 
Annie Banks, and newly appointed commissioner, um, his name is Mark Price. So we're really ha happy to have him on wow, board. Wow, that's so, exciting. Yes, yeah, so every first, third, we have meetings at the firehouse. Okay. They're from 6.30 to 9.30. Uh, we encourage for the community to come out. The charter hasn't been written since 1968, so we're, up, we're, we're actually renewing it. So it's time, if you want to have a hand in the charter, if you want to post suggestions, please stay tuned every, twice a month here. And then also the right city- Right here at Getting in the Know. Right here at Getting in the Know, all yep. things Highland Park. Yeah. And then also, through the city council meetings, they'll also be taping it. Channel 3 will be taping them. Yeah. So citizens, you have uh, a couple of other opportunities to be able to hear what's going on and the different proposals that are made for the charter as well. Facebook, we have a Facebook page too. Then we'll have a hotline number that's coming up and I'll let you know that the next time that Perfect. I'm on. Um, there's also... Um, uh, Saturday community updates where you're able to come. They last about two hours. They're once a month. And then also you can go to the city of Highland Park Charter dot org where you can have an electronic copy of the charter. Okay. okay, you can see the proposals that were um, yes. voted on and talked about. And then also you're able to go to the city clerk and actually get you a hard copy of it for a small fee. So there's different ways we're trying to get this information yes. out. And then we'll be doing door to door as well. We're working on a flyer, finalizing our flyer. Wonderful. So it's a real campaign for Wonderful. this. Wonderful. That's great. That's great. Mm -hmm. All right. So is there anything else that's that you'd like to share? Um, and the, well, also um, on the 30th of uh, October, we're going to have um, apple picking in the hood and Jacoby Rob park that's going to be an avalon village yes so and that's going to be from noon to four and we're bringing uh apple picking the apple picking experience for the children and families we're bringing it to our own neighborhoods a okay. lot of times they can't afford those uh field trips yes. for like 15 bucks each and you're gonna so have it right on at avalon and village and it's for free that is and amazing that is amazing so we're going to encourage everyone to to join the meetings that mama Shu is encouraging you to join um at the firehouse from six to eight what's what are those dates again six thirty to 9 6 30 to 9 30 they're the they're the first and third thursdays of every month perfect mm -hmm. and if they need more information is there a way that they can contact you uh yes well well basically what you can do is you can reach out to us on the um the website which is uh, highlandparkcitycharter.org until we get our hotline number and when i come back we'll have our hotline number wonderful wonderful so we're welcoming mama shu to come on twice a month so she can give you the information that you need to know and i just want to thank Thank our wonderful mayor, mayor, Mayor Hubert Yop, and his administrative team um, for just moving the city forward, the city council for moving the city forward. Um, I'd like to thank WHPR, Mr. R.J. Watkins, Ms. Willis, the engineers, his staff, everyone that is a part of the city and, and making sure that we can continue to move forward and being a part of this wonderful show, this wonderful platform. This is your very own TV show. If you have information and you want to get in the know, please give me a call at 313-868-0342. Until next Monday at 10 a.m., we'll see you then. Have a great week.